And every single time that you send that search term into the negative keywords of your campaigns, it re-optimizes the algorithm and essentially tells Google like, hey, don't show me for this, but show me for the other things that I'm continually get getting traffic for. This is the last step to this whole equation, right? It's like managing the negative keywords specifically with the search terms, all right? So as you start to see these different terms, this is where it gets really interesting. You got to take the terms that are not relevant specifically to what you're actually getting triggered for, because there's going to be some like not as relevant stuff that's going to get triggered, right? And every single time that you send that search term into the negative keywords of your campaigns, it re-optimizes the algorithm and essentially tells Google like, hey, don't show me for this, but show me for the other things that I'm continually get getting traffic for, right? Uh, and every keyword that you turn into a negative keyword, like I just mentioned, it re-optimizes everything specifically for your campaigns and allows the Google to specifically focus on what's working, all right? So how you get there is, again, you click on keywords, specifically in that campaign, you click on negative keywords, all right? So let's just say, hypothetically, you have an electronics consumer store, right? Specifically for this, I have negative keywords as like LG and Panasonic, because guess what? Even though I have an electronics consumer store, I don't run traffic for products for LG or Panasonic. If I did, I would get triggered for those keywords and I would have to pay for that. So immediately I tell Google, as soon as the campaigns fire up, hey, don't show me for any of this stuff because I'm not relevant. So that it keeps them focused on the things that's actually going to make me money, right? So here's the thing about the keywords when you're converting them into negative keywords. There's different types that you can set up uh, for the keywords. There's uh, broad match, there's broad match with modifier. Here's the scoop. I use two types. I don't, I don't get fancy with it. As you guys kind of stick around me more and more, like obviously it seems like a lot of this stuff might be a little complicated, but please just keep it simple. I use two, two types, exact match and phrase match, all right? So what the heck does that mean, all right? Uh, again, I'm not going to go over all this up here, take a screenshot, <laughs> but essentially when you start to see the search terms, right, and again, we're only going to use two types, you have to think to yourself, am I going to make this an exact match or phrase match, okay? Exact match means you tell Google, don't show me for this exact phrase because it's not converting and you're seeing traffic for it, right? So here's the scoop. If you have, again, for example, an electric fireplace website, and you notice that you start getting triggered for the actual phrase, best electric fireplaces for 2019, right? Does that mean you'll never sell an electric fireplace because that phrase isn't converting? No, it doesn't. It just means that that phrase is not converting. It does not mean all the products on your website will not convert, OK? So what we do is we just put brackets around that phrase when we submit it as a negative keyword. And we say, hey, Google, don't show me for this phrase, but show me for everything else that I'm getting traffic for, all right? Then the other option is phrase match, OK? So same concept. You're looking inside your search, uh, search terms. You're seeing all the traffic and stuff that you're actually getting. And you're like, oh, you know what? That brand that I have, Demplex, they're just doing terrible. Like, I just don't want any traffic for them, right? So here's the scoop. Whatever you put in quotations when you submit it as a negative keyword, right, Google's going to take any phrase, keyword, or anything that's relevant to what's in that quotations, and is never going to display you for that specifically in that campaign. So you can immediately get out of seeing traffic for any different specific type of keywords, phrases, or things that you notice isn't relevant to your actual store, right? So. Here's an example, all right? This is inside a campaign with a store that's running traffic for generators, OK? So the first phrase match, 1,000 Coleman generator. We put that as a phrase match because Coleman generators are actually selling pretty well, right? But whenever someone puts in the 1,000 without the watt, I don't know, maybe there's a little disconnect with those people. It's kind of weird. They wouldn't buy anything. <laughs> so we said, hey, just don't show us for anyone that puts in those three specific keywords when they actually search on the search network, right? And then to the exa second example, that's an exact match. It says 1,000 watt brushless generator, right? Does that mean that our brushless generators aren't converting? It just means for the traffic when people put in that phrase, they just would not buy anything. We've seen a lot of clicks for it. They didn't convert. I still want to run traffic for everything else that's working. So I just say, hey, Google, don't show me for that phrase. Keep running traffic for everything else, all right? So here's the results of obviously kind of managing that entire process like we talked about in the beginning. Again, 28% conversion rate, 500%, 700%, right? And these are on brand new campaigns that just launched. And guess what? We just got through the busiest part of the year, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Everybody else's CPA is going up. My CPA is going down, <laughs> right? And that's how I want you guys to be doing as you start to launch the campaigns on the shopping networks.